So learning objective four um, is about what happens to the numbers once you've put them in the journal. Remember, learning objective three that you just had for homework was journalizing the transaction, which means you basically uh, put those that information, that data in the journal. The journal is the very, very first place the recording process starts in accounting. But it's certainly not the last. Just you don't put it in the journal and that's it. You forget about it. Actually, the numbers start traveling. The very first place that you'll see anything that's put into the journal will travel to the ledger. And so you're going to learn a little bit about the general ledger uh, in this objective. And the process of moving <clears throat> the numbers from the journal into the ledger is what posting is, is about. So we will go ahead and take a look at that uh, today. Okay, so the process of what happened. So the ledger basically is a very, very large, you know, back in the day, it was a very, very large book <clears throat> that showed all of the accounts in the company in one very large book. Now these, um, the book was organized in a way that every single account would have its own section in the ledger. And the accounts are listed basically in battle, in um, <clears throat> balance sheet order. The asset accounts are listed first in the ledger in the order they would be on a classified balance sheet. So cash is always gonna be the very, very first account that's listed in the ledger. And then of course, the other current assets would be listed after cash. They would each have their own section. And what I mean by that, it's almost like, like in your book, you know, every topic has its own chapter, you know. So this is sort of like the ledger, you know, the cash, um, the cash account would have its own section. Only the things that happened in cash would show up in that part of the ledger. You would turn the pages the next account, in this case, supplies, the supplies account would be listed and only what's going on in supplies would be listed in the ledger under the supplies account, et cetera, et cetera, for all the accounts. Um, after all the asset accounts are listed in the ledger, the second group of accounts that's listed is uh, are the liability accounts. Again, the way you would see them on the classified balance sheet. So your current liability accounts would be listed first. Each of these accounts, again, would have its own little section in the ledger. And it would basically show you all the activity in that account. Okay. Uh, after the liability accounts <clears throat> are listed, there's sort of a strange order to the equity accounts. The, um, uh, of course, common stock and retained earnings would be listed, but the dividends account is in that group. Um, so the next thing you would see in the ledger are the common are the uh, the common stock account, retained earnings account, and the dividends account. Um, you would then see the revenue accounts listed in the order you would see them, and then everything would end with all the expense accounts. Okay. So uh, this is sort of the order of the accounts in the ledger. And again, just very much like a book that has different chapters, each of these particular accounts will have its own section in this ledger. Okay. Um, well, in order to, uh, if you look at the overall ledger, what you'll see is a company has uh, a chart of accounts. And a chart of accounts is basically a listing of those accounts that the company uses to record transactions in the journal and so forth and so on. As you see, the asset accounts are listed first. And so for Sierra Corporation, which is that, this is the perfect company in the book because it giving, it's giving you lots of examples that I really think you should uh, study. And you see here that their asset accounts are cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, and accumulated depreciation for equipment, which we're going to be getting to that account in chapter four. Uh, you might have seen it, however, in uh, on a balance sheet uh, from chapter two. Um, so again, each of these accounts would have its own separate section in the ledger, and whatever activity happened in each account would be shown. So that's a large piece of information there. 
then the liability accounts would be listed in the order that you would see them here. Again, you already are aware of notes payable, accounts payable, and unearned service revenue. There's a couple of other payables we're going to be learning about. Um, stock loss equity accounts are going to be listed. We all know, you all know about common stock and retained earnings. What you don't know is the dividends account is listed in the chart of accounts under stockholders equity as well. And then you're going to learn about this other account in chapter four. Uh, then the revenue accounts are listed fourth. In this case, Sierra Corporation only has one revenue account, but companies can have multiple revenue accounts depending on what they do. And of course, the last uh, group of accounts you would see um, are the expenses. And of course, we know that Sierra Corporation has a salaries and wages expense and a rent expense from the transactions we looked at. What you're gonna uh, learn about are some other expense accounts um, when we get into chapter four. I have a, a question. Now in the computer age, do you make a journal like in Excel and then it takes those numbers and moves them across the sheets to other places? Or do you always keep entering them over and over again? I would, I would never use Excel because it, it, you know, for this, because um, you're the one who's going to have to build those worksheets and you're the one that's going to have to figure out a formula to move them. Um, and that's, I think why QuickBooks, you know, other types of just simple uh, accounting software, they do all that for you. Um, and so I would highly, highly recommend, you know, even a, even a basic accounting software program where you can add your chart of accounts and then start doing, you know, uh, your entries. And uh, some, some software, um, as you know, that <laughs> uh, some software, as you know, um, has abilities to, you know, for smaller businesses to just scan receipts and other papers and actually do the work for you, uh, do the entries for you. So it's, it's actually quite good what they have today, but no, I would, for accounting, uh, I would stay away from Excel as an option for doing this type of stuff. Um, it's just so much work. You know? I mean, you can use it, but it's just, you're gonna drive yourself nuts. Um, okay, so this introduces you to this concept of posting and posting basically is remember, you just made an entry in the journal. And um, the entry included in, in the very first thing that Sierra Corporation went through. Remember, all of these are references to Sierra Corporation uh, from Learning Objective 1. So it's all cohesive throughout the chapter. That's why you have to sort of read the whole thing and, and kind of follow. It does help understand things. Remember, the very first transaction we journaled as a debit to cash for 10,000 and a credit to common stock for 10,000. OK. Um, Posting basically transfers the journal entry into the specific ledger account. Now remember, the ledger keeps all of these accounts separately, keeps the record of what happened in the account separately. And, <clears throat> and so, uh, as you see, this debit to cash on October the 1st in the journal is going to be transferred to the cash account in the ledger. Again, the ledger lists each individual account that the company has and then tells you what's happened. So in this case, this $10,000 debit is going to be moved to the cash account in the ledger, showing that on October the 1st, stock was issued and that resulted in the $10,000 debit. So simply just transferring the $10,000 debit from the journal into the ledger. Now, because cash is an asset account, the balance in the account will always be a debit balance. And just like a checking account record, you're gonna be seeing every time there's a debit to cash, the balance will increase. Anytime there's a credit to cash, the balance will decrease. Now, this is what this reference number uh, is about, as you'll see in some um, uh, worksheets. Uh, most worksheets in our book don't have it. But in this case, um, the reference in the ledger is J1. And that's because this is the journal entry from page one. So this is a general journal, and that's the page number, page one. 
the cash account is the very first account in the ledger. All accounts, and for those of you that have worked in businesses know that there are account numbers for each individual account. Asset accounts generally start with ones. Uh, liability accounts generally start with twos, threes for stockholders equity accounts, four for revenue and five for expenses. So that's generally how they're set up. So the cash account is the first account in the book. And so this company has made it a account number 101, okay? So that is the reference number here for uh, the journal. Again, you're not gonna see the references in many of the, uh, I don't think you're gonna see them in any of the homework uh, that we have in this particular class, but they do exist in, in reality. And the references are showing where, um, in this case, cash is the count number 101 in the ledger. Uh, this $10,000 debit should be there for October the 1st and sure enough it is. The process of moving the money, moving the numbers into their accounts in the ledger is called posting. And that's all we're doing here. We would do the same thing in the general ledger down further in the book. You will see that the common stock account will have its own section in the ledger. And we would need to post this credit to the common stock account in the ledger. Okay, and you're gonna, we're gonna be doing this today. Um, as you'll see. Okay, so posting simply is about move, you know, transferring the journal entry numbers into the accounts, <clears throat> the specific accounts in the ledger. Okay, and again, every single account has its own little place in the ledger. So this is the process illustrated. How's that? <clears throat> if you have your book, you can follow the illustration along. This is actually on page 111, and we're going to be showing all the way uh, this process all the way through uh, page, 100 and, well, page 118 when we're all done with it. So if you have your book, it's page 111. Uh, check what happens. So we have the very, very first event. This is all the stuff that we've learned in chapter three so far, right? Um, we, we read about a, a, an event. We determine if it's a transaction. If it's a transaction, right, we know that accounts are going to be affected. We decided, okay, when we know it's going to be the cash account that's affected with this transaction because the company got cash, um, stockholders invested $10,000 cash, right, for, for common stock. So the company got cash, and then, of course, they are, there's more common stock. So that was the analysis. We then did a debit and credit analysis back at Learning Objective 2. More cash happens on the debit side of the account. More common stock happens on the credit side of the account. Once we figured that out, we wrote it in the journal. This was Learning Objective 3. In the journal, we had a debit to cash for 10,000 and a credit to common stock for 10,000, okay? So check it out. This was all learning objective one. This debit and credit analysis was learning objective two. I can't seem to get my finger to move here. Um, the journal entry is what you just did in learning objective three. Now we're posting it to the accounts. Now these look like they're side by side. In reality, these are on very, very separate pages in the ledger. They're just side by side in, in the screen here, you know, because they want to illustrate it. So when you open the ledger, the cash account is going to be the first one you see. So the posting process basically is, okay, we showed in the journal that cash had a debit of $10,000 on October the 1st. So on October the 1st, we're going to show cash with a debit increase in the ledger. Again, the ledger only shows, in this case, what's happening in the cash account on the first pages. Deeper in the ledger, there's the common stock account. The common stock account was affected with a $10,000 credit. So that needs to get posted into the common stock account for October the 1st, $10,000 on the credit side. Remember, there are, this little T account just reminds you that accounts have two sides, right? There's a debit side and a credit side. There's a debit side and a credit side. That's all the little T is supposed to be reminding you. There's two sides to every account, right? A debit side and a credit side. Um, and so again, this is all posting is really about, 
Okay. And it's again, learning objective four, and it wraps up everything we've learned in learning objective one and two and, and three. It just is, again, it's moving on the process. Okay. You can't forget any of these steps. They're important. Uh, event number two, as you know, um, again, this is back from learning objective one, carrying you all the way through, right? We know that Sierra Corporation borrowed $5,000 in cash uh, because they got a no payable. We did some basic analysis. We said, okay, the company has more cash and the company has more notes payable. We went ahead and we showed that with an increase to cash and an increase to notes payable. This is all learning objective one. Learning objective two, so okay, so now that we know there's more cash, how do we show it in the cash account? Well, we show it in the cash account with a debit to cash. We know there's more notes payable, how do we show it in the notes payable account? Well, we show that on the credit side, credit to notes payable. We wrote it down in the journal, debit to cash for 5,000, credit to notes payable for 5,000. Now we have to transfer those numbers into their specific accounts in the ledger, okay? Now notice cash account already had activity in it from event number one. That balance of $10,000 was already there. Now we're posting an additional $5,000 on the debit side because we have literally more cash. And of course, later in the book, uh, where we get to the liability section, accounts payable will show this increase on the credit side. But the question then is going to be, what is the balance in cash? And can anybody answer that question? After this event is done and analyzed and journaled and posted, if I asked you, what's our balance in cash, what would you tell me? Ooh, I got a, I got a text. Fifteen thousand. Uh, fifteen thousand is partially correct. Seven. Ah, okay. In accounting, you have to tell, you have to tell us what side it's on. Uh. <laughs> okay. So you have to, in other words, you have to take sides. Uh, yeah. So it's a fifteen thousand dollar debit balance in cash, and that's exactly how we would say it. So if someone said, what's, the, what's, what's our cash balance? You'd say it's $15,000 debit balance. Because the balance is on the, on the debit side of the account. So you have to state, as you state the total, which you got the total right, 15,000, you also have to state what side of the account it's on. And that's because, no, right, there's no negatives, right? There's no negatives, there's no nothing. It's either a debit balance or a credit balance in the account. We already know, what the debit side does to some accounts and what the credit side does to other accounts. So if it's, a de if it's an asset, it's gonna be a debit balance. If it's a liability, it's gonna be a credit balance. Why? Because we know those are the sides that carry the balances. That's how they go, that's how they increase. Can you hold So this is gonna be tricky because I'm gonna keep asking you that all the way through. <laughs> it is Halloween, I have to get better at my evil laugh, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> is that okay? I'll get better by the time Halloween rolls around. We don't have, to, we don't have much Halloween around here, but I'll still do my best to scare the little rascals. Ah, you know, with my life. How's that? Okay. So the next slide, event number three here, shows that on the 2nd of October, again, it's chronological, right? On the 2nd of October, we used... $5,000 cash to buy equipment. We thought about this. Okay, well, we have more We have uh, more equipment. We have less cash. We, uh, we show that in the equation with an increase to equipment, right? And a decrease in cash. Well, we had to apply debit and credit analysis to that. We know that an increase uh, in, a, in an asset account happens on the debit side and a decrease in the asset account is just the opposite. This is the opposite. <laughs> um, and so what we have here is uh, a journal entry showing 
a debit to equipment for 5,000 and a credit to cash for 5,000. That's the journal entry. We have to post those into the um, uh, into their accounts in, in the ledger. So again, the equipment account has the $5,000 debit. We move it into the equipment account on the, on the debit side for October the 2nd. $5,000 debit is posted there now. But look what's happening. Cash has a credit of 5,000. Well, again, accounts have two sides. It's either gonna be on the debit or credit side. So there's no mystery there. This $5,000 is going on the credit side of cash or the cash account after Octo uh, in October 2nd um, transaction there. So now what's the balance in cash? It's 10,000 debit. Good. Right. So remember the credit in cash meant we, we, that money came out of the account. Right. So what's left is the balance. You know that because only two things can happen in your savings account, right? Either goes up or goes down. Right. So in this case, the in your savings account, you never say, if I ask you what's your balance in your savings account, no one would ever say, well, I, I put a hundred dollars in and I took $25 out. Ah, you know, they would just say 75 bucks. Right. So in this case, you would never say, well, I had a $15,000 debit in cash and a $5,000 credit in cash. That's not how we talk about balances, right? What's left in the account is a balance. And what's left in the cash account after this transaction as, was that Michelle or Cassandra? Someone said a $10,000 debit balance, right? The balance in cash is $10,000, debit side. Okay. Uh, all right. Event number four. Oh, well, yeah, you remember this. Also on October the 2nd, we got a cash advance from that client, Arnox. So a cash advance, as you know, means the cu customer is paying us up front. We owe the customer um, services in the future. We analyzed that. We said, okay, well, we got a whole bunch more cash now because the guy just gave us 1200 bucks. But now we owe this fellow $1,200 of, of, uh, of tours. And that's unearned service revenue. So at an increase in cash and an increase in unearned service revenue, uh, increasing cash happens on the debit side. Increasing unearned service revenue happens on the credit side. So we did our journal entry on October the 2nd debit cash 1200 credit unearned service revenue $1200 that's the journal entry now we're going to post them look what's happening this $1200 debit is going to be posted on the cash account right on the debit side of the cash account for October 2nd and this $1200 credit is going to be posted in unearned service revenue on the credit side so now let me open up the floor one more time and ask you what's the balance in cash now Debit eleven thousand two hundred. Okay, it's got a debit balance of eleven thousand two hundred dollars. Nice okay, so if anyone asks you what the balance of uh, in the cash account was, that would be the answer: a debit balance of eleven thousand two hundred dollars. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so we keep moving here. Nice job, you're catching on quite well. Um. All right, so event number five happened where Sierra Corporation received $10,000 in cash because they performed guided services for this company. So they basically earn the money. That's what they do for work. Uh, and that's how they earn money. So we analyzed and we said, okay, we got more cash, um, 10,000 more in cash. But now because we earned that, that's our service revenue. We had $10,000 more in service revenue. We do our debit and credit analysis. Cash goes up on the debit side. The revenue account, service revenue account goes up on the credit side. That became our journal entry, a debit to cash for 10,000, credit to service revenue for 10,000. That's our journal entry. Now we're gonna post them. Again, the cash account is a very active account. This $10,000 debit to cash is gonna be posted on the debit side of cash, uh, of the cash account. The $10,000 credit, comes down on the credit side of the service revenue account, which is in a different place in the ledger. So now, and uh, <laughs> no one's wasting time here. What is your balance in cash? Although we already got an answer. Does everyone agree with that answer? Yeah. 
So it's a $21,200 debit balance. We're good? All right. Good, all right, well, we're moving along. Event number six here, we paid rent on October the 3rd. We paid rent $900 cash. We analyzed that, we said, okay, we certainly have less cash and we now have a rent expense, but every time there's expenses, uh, equity, stockholders equity goes down. So expenses are the same as reducing retained earnings, reducing stockholders equity. So uh, we did our debit and credit analysis. We know that because expenses reduce stockholders equity, they're on the debit side of the account. And they, uh, of course, cash is reduced on the credit side. So we have a debit to rent expense, credit to cash for $900 on the third. We go ahead and post those into the specific account. This uh, rent expense debit gets posted in the rent expense account on the debit side. This $900 credit to cash gets posted on the credit side there. So now what is our balance in the cash account? I think I got a chat here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, I've been doing this for 25 years. I, it's, it seems easy because I think I talk that way, you know, uh, it just when you get started and, and just to make everybody feel a little better, I had to do this twice. Okay. When I was in college, I didn't do so hot my first time around in accounting. I had to do it again. So, and now I'm teaching this shit. So if I can do it, you can do it for damn sure. Uh, you know, and it just takes time. It's just re more reason why I keep telling you it's time consuming course. It just, just takes time. Okay. And that confession was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, uh, Trevor. yeah, yes. No, no problem at all. So, uh, also thank you to Trevor. Oh, thank you, Trevor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to take uh, credit for Trevor's, uh, for Trevor's answer. Yeah. So the balance now uh, is a $20,300 debit balance in cash. And I would agree with that. Good job. Yes. And thank you, Adam, for thanking Trevor. Trevor. No problem. Oh, yeah. The seventh event. <clears throat> was uh, Sierra Corporation on the 4th of October, they bought a one-year insurance policy. So we analyzed this and again, we had more prepaid insurance. When you buy insurance policy, it's your asset, right? Um, and we used cash to buy that. So more prepaid insurance and less cash. Uh, we did a debit and credit analysis. Both of them are asset accounts all asset accounts increase on the debit side. So a debit to prepaid insurance makes sense. Credit cash, because that went down. That's the journal entry on October the 4th. And then we posted it to their specific accounts in the ledger. Uh, this debit went on into prepaid insurance on the debit side, showing a $600 balance there. This credit was posted on the credit side of cash, showing we have less cash. So now how much do we have in cash? It's our balance. <clears throat> 19,700 debit to cash. Yes. So it's a debit balance, $19,700. Okay. We're not debiting cash. We're just, that's the balance. In cash. Uh, and you'll get used to the terminology um, as well. So yes, good job. All right, so event number Ocho. Ocho. Love Ocho. Uh, so here we had on October the 5th, uh, we bought a whole mess of supplies on account. Remember that little phrase means a lot because that means we didn't pay for it yet. We're going to pay for it later. Uh, we analyzed that. We said, okay, we got a whole bunch of supplies. So we got more supplies, but now we have a bill to pay. Uh, that bill is a general bill, accounts payable, more accounts payable. We did our debit and credit analysis, more supplies happens on the debit side of the account, more accounts payable. 
that happens on the credit side of that account. So then our journal entry showed a debit to supplies, a credit to accounts payable for $2,500. Now it's time to post these. So as you see, uh, supplies gets a uh, posting on the debit side for that uh, date. Accounts payable has a posting on the credit side for that date. Okay. All right. So, so let's move on to uh, the ninth event, which was not an event. It was, not, it was an event, but it wasn't a transaction, right? Uh, we hired employees, okay? Again, no transaction has occurred. Right. This is again from Learning Objective 1. The 10th event is when we paid a dividend. Happened on the 20th of October. We paid a cash dividend. We analyzed that. When we pay cash dividends, we have less cash. So we obviously see less cash. But dividends, as you know, from the retained earnings statement, we subtract out dividends from retained earnings. So in other words, every time there's a dividend, there's less retained earnings, right? So that's that. So again, we uh, then applied our debit and credit analysis. The interesting thing, like expenses, every time we have less retained earnings, that happens on the debit side of the account. So a debit to dividends is in order here. And of course, we already know less cash happens on the credit side of that account. So that was our journal entry on the 20th of October. Um, we posted this into the dividends account on the debit side. And this $500 credit was put on the cash in the cash account on the credit side. So let me again open up the floor and ask you what the balance is in cash. Nineteen thousand two hundred debit. Okay, so it's a nineteen thousand two hundred dollar debit balance in cash. We all agree with that. Nice job. All right, and the very very last event, uh, event number eleven here, we paid our employees four thousand dollars salary. Uh, we know that when we pay people, uh, that say salaries or wages expense again expenses lower retained earnings. They take away from the profits of the company. And of course we have less cash. We applied our debit and credit analysis to it. Um, lowering cash happens on the credit side and an increase in any expense, so salary to wages specific, salary to wages specific, happens on the debit side. So the journal entry showed on the 26th of October, which I think is to, oh, it's yesterday. Yesterday's day. Um, a debit to salaries and wages expense, a credit to cash. Then we go ahead and post it into the ledger. Uh, this $4,000 debit comes down onto the salaries and wages expense on the debit side of its account. And this $4,000 credit is gonna be transferred and posted to the credit side of the cash account. Okay, what's the balance in cash now? Fifteen thousand two hundred debit. Okay, we have a fifteen thousand two hundred debit balance in cash right now. Okay, remember that number because you're going to see it very shortly. Okay, so uh, so what happens is you know we we just went through all the journal entries um, that Sierra Corporation had from Learning Objective One and showed you in in more detail. Okay. Um, and this is what the general ledger would look like. Again, just think about all of these as separate pages, separate sections of the ledger. Notice how the, the accounts are listed in the order they would be on a classified balance sheet. The assets are listed first, cash, supplies, prepaid insurance and equipment. Then the liabilities are listed. Next, um, stockholders equity ending with dividends is listed. Service revenue is listed in this case and our expenses are listed here. So again, one of the things you're gonna be asked about are what the balances in the accounts are. <clears throat> and as we just heard, okay, the balance in cash is a $15,200 debit balance. And there it is, right? Because the general ledger, and we're, we use the general ledger basically to know what the balances in the accounts are. 
Um, and that's something, I, you know, in chapter one and chapter two, they basically gave you the information, what the cash balance is, what the supplies balance is. They already gave you that information so you can put the sheets together. Uh, however, this is in reality how we know what the balances are. We just simply look in the ledger. All right, cash, what's the balance in cash? So that's what's the balance in supplies? What's the balance in prepaid insurance? Right? All of these balances are on the debit side. So when you're ever asked about the balance of supplies or prepaid insurance or equipment, you're going to respond with the number on in the debit side. So it's called debit balance of. Notice your liability accounts have balances on the credit side. So you're, you're and same with common stock, same with service revenue. So you're always going to give you the number and then on the credit side. So a credit balance of, credit balance of. Dividends and expenses have balances on the debit side. So you're always going to have balances on the debit side here. Okay. So there is, um, is your posting. Now this isn't actually, it's weird because it's not actually done here in the slideshow. It's actually done in the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop that and bring us into the book to do our do it exercise. If you have your book open, you wanna to turn to page 118 to see this in action. But I'm gonna show it to you by looking at the actual uh, Wiley, uh, Wiley Plus book, and I have to wait for that to kind of go so I can get my tab going here. Okay. So this is just my, this is the instructor's view, but I'm going to get to the book in a moment. Okay. So I'm going to hit full screen here. Okay, so here's the do it. Can everyone see this? Can everyone see that I'm on the Wiley system? Okay, just making sure. So this is the do it exercise for posting. Uh, here is a, it's just a, a small journal for this company, Fatal Inc. Um, and they have three transactions in, uh, in July. On July the 1st, looks like they sold common stock for cash, the, right? The, the owners put cash in for common stock. We've seen this transaction over and over again. <clears throat> on the 9th of July, it looks like we earned some service revenue on account because we have an accounts receivable. So we're waiting to receive payment on work that we've already done. And on the 24th, it looks like we received some of that cash. So it looks like we were waiting for $6,000. Looks like they sent us 4,000. So now we can reduce receivables by 4,000 because we're no longer waiting to receive that. Um, and so these are the transactions that they want you to basically post. So post these to the, uh, the ledger accounts. Now we'll use the T just to show that every account has two sides, debit side, credit side. And so once you take this, and I always just go line by line when I actually write these in. But when you actually do finish writing them in, you'll see <clears throat> cash is affected twice, both on the debit side July 1st debit, July 24th debit is posted into cash. As you see here, common stock is, is affected on the credit side only from July the 1st. Accounts receivable is busy. It's on the 9th, it's affected on the debit side. And on the 24th, it's affected on the credit side. So the, these are simply moving it into the account here. And service revenue, $6,000 credit is shown here. And that, my friends, is posting. Okay. Now, in addition, just to posting it, you'll notice that the dates are, are listed. What I would ask you one step further is to tell me the balance. So, and someone who hasn't really spoken yet, I want to make sure. Um, so, who's it? Damien, are you here? Christian, are you here? Um, what is the balance in cash? Okay, how about Megan?
Was it me, Megan? I'm sorry. Yeah. What's your balance? Okay, I'm sorry. My, my son was needed help with his school. Um, okay. So, balance and cash. Is 34000 Okay, you're missing something. Yes, 34000 what? Uh, debit. Debit balance. Right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. All right. And let's see who else. Um, Clark, what would you, what's the balance in accounts receivable, Clark? Uh, accounts receivable would be a debit of 2000 $2,000 debit balance, right. So this is another, this is the one extra step I would ask people to do is understand what the balances are in each of the accounts, okay? So that's basically, um, that's basically what this lesson is about today. You're gonna to be getting homework. Um, matter of fact, I already posted the homework for you um, to do some posting. <laughs> uh, that's basically what, what we're going to be doing for homework. So um, I will hang 